All right, so here's the simplest case, case one, where both the input market and the output market are perfectly competitive. All right, well, what does that mean? Whenever you have a perfectly competitive market, it means the firms are price taker. All right, don't forget that. So although in the input market, there is a supply curve and in the output market, there is a demand curve, the market, I'm sorry, not the market, the firm operating in these two markets will take the prices, the wage here and the price of output here as given. So they cannot change the price. All right. And so let's remember the assumptions. We have the inputs X labor, for example, um, the, the, the supply curve for labor, some increasing function, the price for good Y, it's a downward sloping demand curve. Y is denoted by the, uh, for the output and y equals f of x is the production function. So the profit is what in this scenario for this firm? So once again, there is a firm operating in both input and output markets, two market at the same time, and the firm is price taker in both markets. All right, so this firm's revenue is, as always, revenue, uh, profit is, as always, revenue minus cost. All right. So what is revenue as always price of the output times. So let me write it. So the revenue always price of the output. It's a uniform price. All right. So we go back to the uh, standard uh, monopoly or sort of the assumption is that the, all the buyers will pay exactly the same price. There's no price discrimination here just to keep the model simpler price of the output times the number of this is number of outputs all right and then the cost here well we don't have a cost function c of quantity instead uh, the cost is stemmed from the the number of uh, workers the laborers you hire so therefore cost is the price of the input times the number of inputs you use. All right, so the, remember the number of output is Y, the number of input is X. So the price of the output, and uh, so price of the output, if it is a, a, a monopolist, it would be the demand curve, PY. But here, because it's a competitive firm, it's gonna be just P, the price, it's a fixed number. The firm cannot choose the price. And the cost, the price of the input, Normally, if it was a monopsonist, the only buyer in the market, it would be the supply curve, the W of X. But because the firm is competitive, in this case, it's gonna take the price as given, so I'm gonna denote it as W. So it, the, 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 the firm cannot change or choose the price. So therefore, the profit is nothing but some fixed number times Y minus another fixed number times x oh that that that's times all right so don't don't confuse that's also times so let's maybe put time time here all right so this is dot so it's not the uh, the input so that's the profit well the firm is choosing what to maximize the profit it chooses how much input to buy how many labors to hire and how many outputs to produce so maximize your profit by choosing X and Y. Obviously, there's subject to, right? You have a fixed technology that you're facing. So you cannot choose uh, Y arbitrarily. It's not independent of the number of X you choose. So X and Y are related. How? Well, through the production function, Y equals F of X. So the optimization problem for the firm that is competitive in both markets is therefore maximize the profit, which is this guy, by choosing X and Y subject to that Y must be equal to FX. So if Y is not equal to FX, it means you're choosing some X, you're choosing some Y, they're not equal, I mean Y is not equal to FX, that means you're producing a bunch of outputs, but the number of output you, I mean, you're, I'm sorry, you're, you're using a bunch of inputs, but the, the, the number of output you choose are not matching to that. So you, you'll, we will probably not be able to produce and sell those products. So they have to be the same, all right? So the Y that you're willing to sell must be equal to F of X. 
So the amount of x you need to produce y is given by this function. So this constraint is very important. So how do I solve this optimization problem? Lagrangian. Yeah, but let's, there's an easier way. What is it? Well, just use the substitution method. Whenever you see y, just plug it into the profit function. So therefore, your problem becomes maximize the profit, pi, by choosing x only. Well, obviously, x and y here are some sort of non-negative real numbers. All right, they can't, you can't choose a negative labor or negative product. So it has to be either zero or positive. And um, pi, however, becomes this. P is a fixed number, remember, the price of the output, times the y is now equals f of x minus w, which is a fixed number, a wage, times x. So now I have a function of one variable, which is x. So how do I maximize this function? The first order conditions, as always, meaning you take the derivative of your profit function with respect to the choice variable you, you, you would like to maximize, um, which is x. So the derivative of this function with respect to x is, this is a constant, this is a function. I don't know what function is. It's given in, in, a, in a question, but here we just assume it's some increasing function. So therefore its derivative is p times f prime of x. All right, minus the derivative of w times x is just w. Set it equal to zero and solve for x means I can just send the w to the other side so it becomes positive. P times f prime of x equals w. All right, so the profit maximizing firm which operates in perfectly competitive input and output market is going to choose the number of labors, x, that satisfies this equality. The price for output multiplied by the marginal productivity of the output must be equal to the wage, which is a fixed number. All right? So um, in a graph, which we will later use, but let's start using it. We will actually use the uh, graph for the input market. So we are going to have the x here, the number of labors we have, and we're going to have the, um, the price, the, the wage, I mean, of the, uh, or, or everything related to money is on this graph. So what we have is the following. So p times, so p is the price. It's the demand curve, right? Uh, it's it's, it's, it's uh, this function, but here it's not a function, it's just a constant because the monopoly, I'm sorry, the competitive firm cannot change it, cannot choose it. So we took it as given. So this is the price curve multiplied by the marginal productivity, which is positive number. All right, we assume that the, the production function is an increasing function, so its derivative is, is positive. The second derivative is negative, so it's uh, it's, it's a concave function. So therefore, uh, the P times, I'm going to call it MP, all right? So this is, this is not the demand curve, the inverse demand curve, but in fact, it's the demand curve multiplied by the marginal productivity. I mean, it's P times F prime of X, all right? So, but it has to be, if the demand curve is linear, all right, so if the demand curve is linear and the marginal productivity is, for example, constant, well, then the, 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 the P times F prime of X is going to look something like this. Okay, so it's going to be a downward sloping curve. Well, it is equal to W. What is W? W is the, the supply curve, right? This is marginal revenue equals marginal cost, all right? As usual, the profit maximizing firms always choose marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So this is marginal revenue, this is marginal cost. All right, so here, and as, as we know, the marginal cost is the production function of, I'm sorry, the supply function uh, of the firms. And here we have sort of the same thing. So this is the, the W, the supply curve in the input market. So Let's say it's, I mean, it doesn't have to be linear, but let's say it is linear, all right? So that's what Wx will look like, okay? So it's, um, you know, it's assuming that it's linear. So in a perfectly competitive market, therefore, uh, the price times marginal productivity 
equals the uh, supply uh, is going to give me the uh, competitive equilibrium price. So let's call it WC. So supply again, supply equals the demand in a sense. So this is the demand of the competitive firm in the um, demand of the firm in the competitive market. All right, so think it that way. So therefore, this would be the perfect, again, assuming that the entire competitive market has exactly the same production function, aggregate production function, let's suppose. And so we can think of this competitive market as just one unit of representative firm, which is this firm with this uh, technology. So therefore, the market demand is equal to the demand of that particular firm, which is a price taker. So therefore, this is again the uh, perfectly competitive market uh, input price or the wage. And this is the uh, perfectly competitive market uh, optimal output level, uh, I mean, which is optimal input level. So this is how much labor the competitive market would hire and how much the competitive market would pay. So now I'm going to talk about case two, where this exactly the same firm is again perfectly competitive in the input market but monopolist in the output market and then make the comparison and then show on this graph how things would change. All right, so it's follow, I'm coming up.